So in today's video, I'm going to cover off on the V4 engine. If you want to follow along and see me finish the design, like the video, leave a comment, and I can screen record as I'm modeling the engine, narrate it, and share it straight with you guys so you can see how I draw the engine. So the V4, the thing I've talked about but haven't really showed. So this is progress as of recently and it's been sitting in this state for a while. So it's almost at a stage where I can manufacture the thing but I'm not happy with it. I'll give you a brief rundown of it and then I'll show you what I mean. So here it is, it's not too wide, no wider than the standard Triumph unit. You can fit your four YZ85 cylinders. And this is where your four individual crankshafts go. Now each crank would have this pressed onto the drive end. Um, this doesn't have a keyway modeled into it, but there's a keyway there. And each of these would drive a lay shaft, which is here. And then this lay shaft would turn this, in turn spins this gear, spins the clutch. Now, that's a very roundabout way of coupling four off-the-shelf cranks. So, my problem being with this um, layout is, look at the size of it. Look at the length of it in this unconventional split. Um, what you'll also see is pretty neat, I'm quite proud of that. There's a, there is a chain off the back of the clutch, and I'll have that driving a sprocket here. Um, I just need to make some more room, probably move this case out but um, put a sprocket here and that will drive the water pump but I modeled the oops that's one of these here you go I modeled the wheelbase now if I open this sketch it's gonna be dimensioned now if you know anything about bikes you will know that 1440 is a fairly long wheelbase that's roughly or very close to the length of the M1000 BMW the Ducati V4R so those are very long bikes the Honda RC 213 VS and they have a lot more power than this will you know this is hopefully gonna have depending on the cylinders and cranks you use 120 to 140 horsepower um, but yeah, as you can see, with a standard length swing arm, you're looking at a very long wheelbase. Um, and it's kind of cool because I could see the ground clearance and all that jazz, which is, um, yeah, pretty neat. Oops, I could see if the wheel would strike the um, cylinder head. But I haven't modeled that properly, that's just there for show. But yeah, as you can see, this is a very long engine. Now, problem, what do you think this engine needs to run? Yeah, you guessed it, a carburetor. Now, where am I going to put four of those? I started thinking, oh yes, I could use some 90 degree bends, I could use some KTM throttle bodies, fuel injector, and, and then I, I got a model for a couple of carbs and I thought, oh yeah, I've got to squeeze two of these in here and then mirror that on the other side now look at this do I want to make the bike any longer hell no so I backtracked and I came up with mark 2 I didn't get very far because I gave up on it but here was my idea coupling gears were gonna directly drive the clutch they were gonna be coupled here and then this gear was gonna drive the clutch now, the pain in the ass thing would be for assembly, because of this interfering with this, I would need to install the clutch without a needle roller bearing on the input shaft. So yep, that's a bit annoying. And this looks weak as hell. The huge open area here. Now, bear in mind, um, this would be made wider and it would all connect. Um, this is just about as far as I got with it. 
Um, yeah, but I just gave up on this. It just looked too weak. But it was or is a hell of a lot smaller compared to this. I mean, look at the clutch. First, the clutch is a hell of a lot smaller. And then we get to Mark III. This is the one I think I am going to go ahead with. So it's still in the process, the process of being drawn, but as you can see, it is far more compact. The engine is about 50 millimeters taller, but it's about 75 millimeters shorter. If I dimension this, look at that. That is the wheelbase of an RGV 250 with an RGV length swing arm. Just look at that. We can fit. Well, I might be getting a bit ahead of myself because I'll model, I'll quickly model a cylinder on there. I'll just borrow my dimensions. So here it is. Let's go back to the sketch and this is an RGV wheelbase. Look at that. Heaps of room for carbs. I mean, I could move these down slightly further into the V. That is a possibility. So we will look at doing that. I will just quickly copy this. So what I'll do is I'll edit the sketch. Oh, I don't know. Finish that sketch. I want to edit this sketch. And I'm just going to draw a line here. And then I'm just going to go to mirror. The mirror these about here is it symmetrical. I'm going to finish sketch. Now, look at that. I mean, we've got heaps of ground clearance. There's no way we need that much travel. I mean, 218 mils, heaps. Oops, say we can get the carb right off here. 170 mils. Now, let's look at these random carbs I've got here. How long are they? Bear in mind, I didn't draw this model. Um, I just borrowed them. 100 mils, 70 mils to play with. And bear in mind, 28 mil flat slides are probably going to be shorter than that. So we got room, and I mean hell, that is 170 mils with an RGV length wheelbase. I mean hell, if we just go to GSXR, I don't know, or Yamaha R6 wheelbases, I think it's somewhere about there. It might even be 1415 now. Boom! Look at that. If you guys are interested, I'll do some more screen recordings I can talk through what I'm doing as I'm doing it so I'm about to model the rest of the reeds because they're symmetrical I'll just do it all on one cylinder and then pretty much mirror the whole thing and it's gonna be the same but yeah I can take you guys through modeling all in here doing all the um, little transfer port tunnels fixing all this up through here um, and getting it to a finished product prior to sand casting and fixing this up as I just chopped this whole face from the um, original engine 